Good evening. Hello, everybody. Keep eating. Don't worry about that. Just thought maybe we would start the proceedings. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, welcome to the Kenyan Review for Literary Achievement. My name is Grace Keith Hupshire, and I'm serving as this year's events chair as we honor Rita Dove for her extraordinary poetry. As many of you know, the Nobel Prize in Literature is being delayed to 2019. And some, such as Dwight Garner, believe that Rita deserves that Nobel Prize, saying recently in the New York Times, Dove's poems stick with me. They lodge in the mind. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and with no further ado, here's David Lynn, the editor of the Kenyan Review. I'm happy to tell you that over the past month and more, many students, faculty, and local citizens in central Ohio have been reading and discussing Rita Dove's beautiful, deeply moving poems. Just last week, a group of KR associates and members of Kenyon's Black Student Union performed a medley of these poems, and it was an amazing event. Right now, as a matter of, of fact, we are in the middle of the annual literary festival in Gambier, and the swirl of events is building towards the marvelous climax of the Denham Sutcliffe Memorial Lecture, which Rita will present on Friday evening. Ms. Dove, a winner of the Pulitzer Prize and Poet Laureate of the United States, is the only poet to have received both the National Humanities Medal and the National Medal of Arts. Rita Dove, in behalf of the Kenyon Review Board of Trustees, it is my great honor and pleasure to present you with theirs 2018 Award for Literary Achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is so heartening to stand here with you. Uh, it is friends, colleagues, comrades, and letters. This Lifetime Achievement Award, this Kenyan Review Award, represents so much to me the arc of my identity as a writer, an African American, a girl become woman mother, grandmother, and your recognition is made doubly, triply sweet by the fact that it comes from such a venerated journal, a magazine which is housed in the state of my birth, Ohio. So thank you, all of you, for everything you do to promote the life of books and the life in books, for the recognition you've given these fine authors who have received this award in the past, and for allowing us to step off the shelves and come alive in our finery for this wonderful evening. <laughs> Contrary to what a frightening percentage of the world and its politicians believe, poems are a hard-rung bounty. Because poets are the bearers of a trust, we have been entrusted to bear the immaterial wealth of our people, their stories and their longings, their half-dreamed-of hopes and half-swallowed fears onto the white space of the page, into that silence waiting to be filled. And then the reader turns to that page and hopefully the process happens in reverse literary persuasion traveling a direct line to reach the metaphysical plane. Poetry, that, that sublimely human enterprise, challenges us to pay serious and tender attention 
both to the things of the world and to the journeys of the spirit. Through poetry, we speak soul to soul and feel a little less alone on the planet. As a poet, I'm always aware that language must be kept fresh in order to help others tune into that kind of communal heartbeat. We all know only too well what a difference a word can make and the pauses that surround that word, that support or question or blast a specific meaning. And there's no choice then but to catch our breath and return to the work of making ourselves heard over and over, hoping that we won't be throttled by political control freaks who find perverse satisf satisfaction in threatening and silencing truth spoken to power. So let, so let us all continue to tell the stories and the stories beneath the stories and beyond the stories to sing the grief and the joy and the terror and the hope and to unmask the inner malice of the rapist or the control freak or the psycho terrorist or the bully. Let us continue to address the seemingly endless permutations of cruelty using the most powerful weapons at our disposal, words. The best words in the best order, dead Coleridge reference. <laughs> words that will get under the skin and rattle the brain and pierce the heart. But there can never be enough thank yous. And so first and foremost, I, and ever most, I would like to thank my husband, Fred Feebon, who is my mainstay, my pillar for the past 42 years. I, I cannot imagine my life without him. I thank my parents, who let me read whatever I wanted from cereal boxes to Shakespeare, as long as they could see the glow in my eyes. And I thank those teachers who fanned those flames, and the librarians, oh bless the librarians, who kept that fire burning. My profound gratitude also to those who believe in writing enough to brave the economic risk of it. The Kenyan Review, which published me very early in my, my writing career before it was a career. And, and publishers such as Gerald Costanzo at Carnegie Mellon University Press, who published my first books of poems, followed by the late Carol Hook Smith, and now Jill Bielowski, another Ohio girl I might note, who's right here among us tonight, who's now my editor at W.W. W. Norton. But last but not least, I am fiercely grateful to all those people, friends, strangers, old and young, men, women, children, all of those I've met over the course of this life as a poet, people who, despite the perils of their own existence, taught me to savor the sweet and spit the bitter out, and who, though their stories may not be deemed newsworthy by virtue of their grace and perseverance and their sacrifice and never you mind generosity of spirit, keep reminding me that beyond setbacks and defeats, in the end, as Roger said, love must trounce hate. This is for them. This is why we write, I think, always. And because I can't leave this room without putting a poem in it, I will end with this, and thank you all. Testimonial. Back when the earth was new and heaven just a whisper. Back when the names of things hadn't had time to stick. Back when the smallest breezes melted summer into autumn, when all the poplars quivered sweetly in rank and file. The world called, and I answered. Each glance ignited to a gaze. I caught my breath 
and called that life swooned between spoonfuls of lemon sorbet. I was pirouette and flourish. I was filigree and flame. How could I count my blessings when I didn't know their names? Back when everything was still to come, luck leaked out everywhere. I gave my promise to the world, and the world followed me here. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>